Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for a pretty heavily requested video. Obviously Chelsea are today confirming the signing of Romelu Lukaku and I have been asked many times what my best predicted 11 will be for Chelsea to begin the season. Now of course on Thursday we've got the Super Cup game against Villarreal, an opportunity to bring another trophy into the cabinet and then Crystal Palace at home on Saturday in the opening match of the Premier League season. It is so, so tough with this Chelsea squad because we know it is a squad where if you look at the qualities of Manchester City, last season they won the Premier League by 12 points and arguably they could have fielded 12, 12, 12, definitely not 12. They could have fielded two different 11s week in, week out and still been favourites to win most matches. When I look at the potential Chelsea team that we could have this season with Lukaku coming through the door, with potential signings of Jules Kunde, who I've actually excluded within today's video, but of course it's quite obvious where he could fit in when you guys see the players on the graphic, Chelsea are in a very luxurious position as well. We've got great quality in the back, we've got absolute brilliance throughout the midfield, and then in the attack, we've also got some very, very good options. We're offering different varieties of wit, creativity on the edge of the box, or finishing inside the area. So without any further ado, I'm going to begin what I believe is the best current 11 based off of what we saw at the end of last season, what we've seen throughout the Euros, what we hear, and what we've seen from Thomas Tuchel during pre-season. And a lot of it comes down to whether or not we remain with three at the back. And for the basis of this video where I don't think we've seen enough in pre-season or really anything to suggest that Thomas Tuchel will revert away from this system, particularly now that we've signed Lukaku, who obviously plays very well in the spearhead of a front three with three at the back and fullbacks going absolutely crazy as wingbacks. So without any further ado, we begin with probably one of the only positions that is just absolutely not up for debate whatsoever, and that is the goalkeeping position. Edouard Mendy is the number one goalkeeper. Kepa Ariza Balaga is still on the Chelsea books, and it doesn't look as though there is any real push to try and get rid of Kepa this summer. We've got Bettinelli also now as a number three, which is a decent backup, and I think that Chelsea can't really go wrong with having Kepa Ariza Balaga as a backup goalkeeper. He's a decent keeper, but the only issue is the longer he remains Chelsea's number two and not playing Premier League Champions League football, the harder it might be for Chelsea to ever recoup the money that we spent so much on him only a couple of years ago. We move into the back three and there are questions to be asked now in every position. As I said, Jules Kunde could come in and I think many people would probably say that he would become immediately, if Chelsea spend 80 odd million euros on him, Chelsea's first choice right centre-back. But based off of what was happening at the end of last season, as Piloqueta holds his place in the team, there is a lot of questions as to whether or not, in order for Chelsea to fit in more of their attacking quality players, maybe Rhys James starts to move over to the right centre-back position. That could see us end up with hudson Adoy playing on the right-hand side in a Rhys James kind of role. But for right now, I think Chelsea's best 11 still incorporates Cesar Azpilicueta in the side. We move into the central position. And it is between two players, Thiago Silva and Andreas Christensen. Thiago Silva is getting older. And I do wonder if this could be the season where we start to see him miss a little bit more games. We just got to hope he doesn't get an injury. But as good as Christensen was in the Champions League final, the end of the season under Thomas Tuchel, and of course his performances in the Euros, Thiago Silva is still my number one. At this moment in time, I've not seen enough to suggest that he's deteriorating quick enough for him to lose a place in this team. I think at the beginning of the season, we'll see Christensen play a bit more than Silva as he regains full fitness again, coming back from reaching the final with Brazil. But Thiago Silva, I still think, is the best in that role. We move into probably the easiest of the defenders to pick, the left centre-back, Rudiger. Absolutely made it his own towards the end of last season. I am delighted that Tony Rudiger has revived his Chelsea career from what looked like it was going to be an incredibly doomed position under Frank Lampard. But Tony Rudiger keeps this spot for me. I'm so excited to see Rudiger back in a Chelsea shirt this season. New contract, we shall see. But Tony Rudiger definitely makes the team. 
we move into the wing backs. I'm going to put them in together because I've gone for my number one slot with Reese James and Ben Chilwell. Not really a massive surprise. However, if we do take Azpilicueta out of the team, which isn't unforeseeable, whether it's Reese James in right centre back or Jules Kunde, then we could see Callum Hudson Odoi on the right wing back position or on the right side of a midfield if it lines up on the screen like a 3 4 3. The thing with Callum Hudson Odoi is what we've seen from him in pre season is that he looks incredibly sharp. He looks as though he's put on a bit of muscle, he's got his pace back. And I just wonder, the preseason that Callum has had is going to prompt Thomas Tuchel to push him closer to the starting eleven. And if he does, I think that in terms of what he has in front of him to work with, I think hudson Adoy breaking into this team is actually more likely as a wing-back at this moment in time as opposed to one of Chelsea's more creative, forward-thinking, attacking midfielders or wingers. It is a tough one when you're building this team because you want to get yourself as much width as possible, but you've also got to be quite assured that the centre of the pitch towards the end of last season, particularly in that Champions League final for Chelsea, was just so secure that you don't want to stretch things too much by potentially making it a midfield three, then having a striker with a right wing, a left winger naturally, or if you want to kind of have two roaming attacking players behind the striker. You guys are going to see as we progress through what I've chosen, but both Rhys James and Ben Chilwell make my current best 11 with the hudson Adoy rotation idea. Let me know in the comments down below. Now in the middle of the park, I think there are three players who are the front runners to take these positions. It's N'Golo Kante, Jorginho, and Mateo Kovacic with Ruben Loftus-Cheek still knocking on the door at the moment. We're unsure if he's actually going to have a place in the squad still. There's three weeks left of the transfer window. I'm sure Thomas Tuchel will sort it out, but I do think Ruben will be in the squad. As for the two that I've picked across both teams, when I look at the balance, when I look at the quality, and you've also got to remember, being the champions of Europe in club-level football is going to give these Chelsea players a huge confidence boost going into this season. However, Jorginho being a champion of Europe in both international and club football is going to make him one of the most confident players on the planet right now. So with that being said, you guys know what I believe about N'Golo Kante. I think he's the best midfielder in the world. On any given day, this man can win any team that he's playing for matches. Kante is there alongside the brilliance of Jorginho. And I think that this midfield, Kante, what he learned under Maurizio Sarri, what he's developed in his game in the last few years, is that ability to go forward. Managers begin to trust him and give him that license to carry the ball. He's not just a ball winner. He's not just a passer. He gets forward. I wouldn't say passing is actually his best thing, but winning the ball back, distributing it quickly, giving it to a Jorginho. I think that this midfield, with what we have in front of these two this season, could be a formidable partnership. And if Chelsea, like I believe we will, will go ahead and win the Premier League, then I think the form of these two and the partnership that they will build could well be the key in order for us to do that. We move forward, and this is where it gets incredibly tough. There are a plethora of players that Chelsea have in the attacking positions. However, because we've just signed Romelu Lukaku, and he's obviously going to come in to lead the line, he's not here to sit on the bench behind Timo Werner, I've had to make a decision. And again, this is such a difficult video to make because I do believe as much as the 3-4-3 won us the Champions League last season, I do think we're going to see a change in order for Thomas Tuchel to keep people happy but also to utilize the attacking talent that will inevitably end up wasting minutes on the bench. Hakim Ziyech in pre-season has been fantastic. Christian Pulisic, I am beyond excited for what this guy can do. However, it is so hard for me to not Mason Mount and Kai Havertz behind Romelu Lukaku because I think that that's, those two, the combination of both Mount and Havertz and the way they juxtapose one another yet offer such brilliant fluidity in Chelsea's attacking movements and ball progression when retrie retrieving the ball and taking it from the deeper areas. I think both Havertz and Mount are so key in this Chelsea team and I think the way Lukaku plays with his back to goal will allow two natural finishers and natural progressors such as Mount and Havertz to get in to better shooting positions more frequently so that we don't see the same statistical mess that Chelsea created last season of not being able to convert chances. So that is my 11. On both teams, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this for this video, but both times with either the Callum hudson Adoy variant or the Azpilicueta variant, I've put Havertz, Mount and Lukaku as the best front three. 
it was incredibly difficult to admit Christian Pulisic because I just think he's so good. Incredibly hard to admit Timo Werner, or admit, to get rid of Timo Werner. I don't know what word I'm looking for here. I do these off the cuff. To get rid of Timo Werner was tough too because the runs that he made, absolutely key towards the end of Chelsea winning the Champions League. And I think that together, Werner and Lukaku could really create a special partnership. But at that means either one of Havertz or Mason Mount drops out of the team. And right now, when I think about my personal GBFC, George Benson's best Chelsea 11 for the season, it includes all three of Havertz, Mount and Lukaku every single time. And based off of what we've seen from Thomas Tuchel in pre-season, I don't think he's going to change too dramatically in the early phases of the campaign in order to accommodate for those attacking players. I think we might see it as the season progresses, but to begin with, I think is Chelsea's best 11. It's going to be very hard to please everybody with this one because there are so many good players who I could have justified putting in and maybe I'm going to have to get somebody else on the channel to discuss how everybody gets these minutes. Maybe I'll get big man Eunice on to discuss that. Stay tuned for that video. But anyway, going to wrap up this video here. If you didn't see the Chelsea News video earlier today, you should go check it out. I'm also uploading on C... Well, on CFC. I'm also uploading shorts called CFC in short, CFCIS, daily news series here on YouTube Shorts. If you're watching on your phone, go show me some love over on that video. It's like 56 seconds long, giving you all the bite-sized news. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this, your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you all later. Come on, you blues.